how do you put this in this and make it feel real? If you've ever seen these 2D motion graphic style animations before, you might think that they're cool, but that their use case is just limited to these flat motion graphics compositions. Boring! But I'm here to show you that you can integrate these really effectively into your real world 3D footage to tell a larger and overall better story. We're gonna be jumping into Adobe After Effects to learn how to get the most out of these 2D motion graphics. And the reason we're going over this today is because we're running a contest right now to see who can create the best fake advertisement using this motion array horse footage from our latest commercial. And the best video is gonna win $1,000, so stay tuned to the end to hear more about that. But right now, let's dive into After Effects and take a look at how we can recreate this shot from our commercial. By the way, this shot is free to download for the next week. So go and grab it from the link in the description below. You'll have to sign up for a free account, but there's no credit card required. Okay, now that you've done that, I've got this shot of my horse that I can bring into After Effects to see what we can do to recreate this shot. You'll notice that we've got a blend of real footage with fake cartoon animated motion graphics, which is super cool and it works really well. You might see this as really reminiscent to movies like Who Framed Roger Rabbit and Space Jam. We're blending 2D animation and 3D real world footage happens seamlessly. So how do we do that for ourselves? Well, I'll show you a couple tricks to make it look phenomenal. Let's start by just dragging our footage here to create a new composition. The first thing is to track our footage. There's a bunch of different ways to track inside of After Effects, but if we highlight the clip on our timeline and then go over to our tracker here, if you can't see this, just go up to Window, Tracker, and let's click on Track Camera. Now let it do its magic and it'll track the movement of the scene based on where it believes the perspective of the camera to be throughout the shot. This is super powerful because it allows for you to create a virtual camera by just clicking here and then drag and drop your motion graphics into the shot. Then let's line up the timing of where the horse stomps here with its back feet so that this explosion happens. And then when we press play, it doesn't look very good because we need to tell this motion graphics layer to be 3D as well. So let's go down to this toggle mode button here until we can see this menu set up here. You should see a little cube, which allows this layer to be manipulated in 3D. So press it. And because we have a camera already made for our scene based on the footage, when we press play, now it's moving along with the scene. But chances are it's gonna look better, but not perfect. So what do you do if your motion graphics aren't quite lining up with the movement of your shot? Well, you simply need to move it backwards or forwards in position. What do I mean by that? Well, if you pull up the position parameters here in the transform section of your motion graphics, you should see that instead of having two numbers, one for your X axis and one for your Y axis, you now have a third one for the Z axis. This will allow you to push things further away from or pull them closer towards the virtual camera. If you pull up a second view here by clicking this button and then go down to two views and then set this to top view, we can see the virtual camera moving in 3D space. But we can also see what happens if we move our third position slider here for our motion graphics. It gets even further away from or closer to the virtual camera. By doing this, you can change how much movement looks correct by pushing it forwards or backwards in Z space. Then you can scale up or down to match the perspective you want. Here's a general principle to follow. If you're rotating your camera and spinning around, the further away objects are, the faster they're gonna move. And the closer objects are, the slower they'll move by comparison. But if you're simply moving along one axis in a straight line, sort of like we're doing in this shot, tracking along with the horse, then further away objects will move very little and close up objects will move very fast. Let me show you another way that you can think about this. If I click on my base footage again, and then highlight the track camera effect, I can see all of these little tracking markers along the wall here. And I can select a bunch and then right click and then select to make text from this section. And when I do, I can make it say whatever I want and then increase or decrease the size of the text to make it look natural. And I'll also change the blend mode here so that it looks a little bit more integrated with the natural world. And if we play back, we can see that we've got the movement pretty bang on. It looks like it's sticking directly to the wall. But if I take the Z axis here and pull it towards myself, even if I scale down to keep the same perspective, it's gonna have way more movement because the camera is passing by it a lot faster. And if I push it further away and scale it up, you can see that it's too slow. So this is one of the ways that you can think about how to judge what's happening in your scene so you can adjust it to match your shot perfectly. And before we get back to these motion graphics assets, here's a little trick. If you wanted to get a sense for where things should be in relationship to your 3D camera, 
You can take an object based on areas that you know, like for me, for example, the text on the wall here, or you can even create a new shape based on a bunch of these tracking markers and extend it to line up with this wall. And I'm just gonna unlink the scale parameter here so that I can squash and stretch the shape to roughly line it up with the shape of this building, just as a reference point. And now if we go back here to our two angle view and highlight this shape, I can see where the virtual camera thinks this building is. And so I can make sure that my assets are where I want them to be. So if I look at where my flame graphics are, they're way behind this wall. That's not right. They should be roughly here in between the wall and the virtual camera. And now I can move them there. And now I'm a lot closer to where I need to be. And I can start doing a bit of the fine tuning with the hardest work already done. Now, if you've got the movement right, but it's too big or too small, just change up the scale and even the rotation to get the right look that you want. Changing scale and rotation won't change its locked position in 3D space, just how it's presented in that spot. So now if we play back, boom, that looks awesome. But look, you might be worried that putting all that work into one item is really sketchy if you're not convinced that that's the asset you wanna use. And it would be a lot of work to switch out later. Well, that's not true. Because if you highlight this asset and hold Alt or Option, and then click and drag another asset over top of it, it swaps it out while keeping all of the attributes that you gave it to get it where it looks awesome. Meaning that you can just swap things out quickly and it still looks awesome. And the final step here is to enable motion blur. Just click the little moving ball icon and it works automatically. And by doing that, we get rid of all the sharpness that we wouldn't see if it was actually moving at this speed. And there we go, perfect. But now we can actually go further because right now we've tied this element into the world through perspective and motion, but now we can also tie it through another means, shadows. I have here some cartoon smoke that's getting kicked up through the horse's motion, but it still doesn't feel quite right. And that's because if it was really smoke in this world, it would cast a shadow. Now, if your thought was to initially just add a drop shadow effect, then you can see that's not gonna work. We actually need to create fake shadows from the original assets and manually move them into the correct position. But the nice thing is, is that it's actually easier than you might think because we can just copy the smoke layer with controller command D and then we can rotate it to be flat along the ground and dropping it down using the Y axis and making adjustments along the X axis as well as scaling. As long as we don't change its Z axis position, we can safely keep it at the same speed as the original while still making all of these changes. We're getting there, but now we need to make this shadow instead of just looking like a duplicate on the ground to actually be dark like a shadow. So let's go to the effects and presets window and select Lumetri color. You can use this or levels or really whatever you prefer, but I like using Lumetri color. Let's drag and drop it on. And to make a shadow, I'll basically just have to go to the curve section and bring this top right part down to make it more or less completely dark and then raise the bottom up a bit to make the blacks not pure black, but to wash them out just a little bit. We can see from the example of the horse's shadow that it's not pure black. It's still got a bit going on there and you can actually see through it a little bit. Once we feel like we've got it about right, we can move over to the color of the shadow. I can clearly see, for example, that the horse's shadow is a bit more blue-green compared to the obviously more warm reddish-yellow shadow here that I've got going on. So let's go ahead and adjust either the temperature sliders or the color wheels or whatever other method suits you best until we get something that matches the real life shadows in the footage. And then finally, we can play around with the overall opacity of the clip if we need to. But there is one more small problem. Right now, the smoke is the correct darkness and relatively the correct color, but it's actually pointing the wrong direction. If we look at the shadow of the horse, we can see that the sun is casting shadows in this direction, but the shadows on our smoke layer are going this direction. So what do we do? Well, we can actually add one more effect, corner pin. And we can use this to keep the same 3D positioning of the shadow, but stretch it out so that it's pointed in the correct direction, as well as also make it longer or shorter if needed. And again, using real life shadows from the original footage is gonna be the best point of reference to make it look perfect. And once we add a few more pieces in, boom, there we go. That is how easy it can be to add 2D assets to your 3D footage. And the best part is that now you're equipped with every tool you need to recreate almost any shot from this commercial.
This shot at the beginning just uses the same principle, but doesn't add any of the shadows to keep the assets a little bit more separated from the rest of the world in the mind of the viewer. So now it's your turn. Right now we're hosting a contest to see who can create the best fake horse commercial for a real cash prize of $1,000. It just needs to feature some of our free horse clips, be less than 60 seconds long, and it needs to be posted on Instagram, TikTok, or YouTube with the hashtag motion array horse commercial. So get creating because submissions close on November the 21st. And I can't wait to see all the amazing submissions you're gonna create.